Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm delighted to speak on behalf of the 14 members of the CPF. We are all grateful to C4 for once again taking the lead in organizing this ambitious CPF event which brings together climate change negotiators, foresters and other stakeholders. Thanks also to other CPF members who have devoted significant time and resources to put together today's full agenda. Such efforts clearly demonstrate how much our partnership is greater than the sum of its parts. But above all, Francis, you and your team, hardworking team, deserve a big hand from all of us here today. <laughs> CPF has accomplished much over the years through its comprehensive coverage of key forest issues. Our strength lies in the informal and voluntary nature of our relationship and our commitment to jointly address common concerns. We continue to stand ready to respond to requests from countries and from regional and international processes to help achieve sustainable forest management. Decisions on post-2012 arrangements under UNF uh, Triple C will have profound impacts on forests and forest dependent people around the world. A broad red plus instrument can help to harness the full mitigation potential of forests in developing countries while at the same time sustain the range of forest functions essential to livelihoods, economic growth and env environmental security so eloquently touched upon already by Gruhar and Brundtland. In addition, decisions related to greenhouse gas accounting for forests and forest products in developed countries could provide important incentives to improve the management of their forests. Last year, CPF released a strategic framework for forests and climate change, which underscores that sustainable forest management SFM is an effective framework for forest-based climate change mitigation and adaptation. SFM is the sector's overarching goal, a goal which, according to the UN General Assembly, quote, aims to maintain and enhance the economic, social and environmental value of all types of forests for the benefit of present and future generations." Unquote. This statement affirms that the sector decades ago moved beyond a limited focus on sustained yield of timber to one that encompasses the multiple functions of forests, including the provision of ecosystem services. We cannot again fall into the trap of looking at forests through only one lens, this time carbon. Some of you may have been among the more than 7,000 people who attended the World Forestry Congress in Argentina in October. The Congress prepared a strong message to COP15 about the merits of using SFM as a framework for forest-based responses to climate change. It also calls to improve governance, increase financing, empower marginalized groups, and provide better, provide better access to technologies as prerequisites to achieving SFM. Copies of this uh, message are available at uh, the FAO booth uh, here at uh, Forest Day 3. In too many countries, the forest sector and sustainable forest management are handicapped uh, by inadequate funding, weak pol political support and lack of cooperation across sectors. Red Plus offers a chance to reverse these trends and put to good use the wealth of forestry expertise available. The UNF C process has been valuable in this regard by advancing the very issues 
which have concerned the sector for decades, notably halting deforestation, reversing forest degradation, and improving the flow of ecosystem services. As to deforestation, which has been touched upon by most of the speakers already, uh, it will continue to be one main challenge. Preliminary findings of the Global Forest Resources Assessment 2010, conducted by FAO in collaboration with all the world's countries, indicate that the annual rate of deforestation has slowed down compared with the 1990s, but not as much as we had hoped. We therefore need to reinforce current efforts to reduce deforestation and forest degradation and to manage our forests in a sustainable manner. Next year you will hear more about the results probably in the African Forest and Wildlife Commission uh, regular meeting to start with. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change poses new challenges but also creates new opportunities for the forest sector. National and international policy discussions and actions on climate change need to build on the knowledge and experience of the stakeholders who manage and depend on forests. We cannot afford to be mere bystanders in the process. We have too much to win and too much to lose. I hope that you put the knowledge you gain today to good use both here and beyond Copenhagen. I want to wish you productive and fruitful discussions throughout today's event and in the week to come. CPF members and others in the forestry community are looking forward to the results of Forest Day 3 and uh, uh, thanking again, once again, all uh, the distinguished speakers here today. I think with this I can say that the Forest Day 3 is opened. Thank you.